Hope you're doing well today. It's March 12th. Our reading today, we are in Deuteronomy, the first few chapters. The second giving of the law, sort of expounding on things that had happened. A little bit of a, no, repetition is not the right word, but a, a retelling or a, oh, a review, let's put it like that. Deuteronomy 1.1, the command to leave Horeb, Mount Sinai. And let me get over there, if I can. Let's see, I hope. I can do this right. Deuteronomy chapter 1-1. One, one. Hold on just... Having trouble today. Okay. Leaders appointed. Okay, the command to leave Horeb or Sinai. Leaders appointed. That's the Jethro account. Israel's refusal to enter the land, the promised land. The spies giving the bad report. The penalty for Israel's rebellion. Namely, all those of a certain age and up. We're not going to be allowed to enter chapter 2, the wilderness years, spoken about. Then you have Sion, King Sion being defeated, King Og being defeated. Seems like in Jericho, as you'll have Rahab the harlot mentioning some of these things. Okay, the, ch the passage I want to look at today is Moses forbidden to enter the promised land. Verse 23. And hopefully you're familiar with why that happened. We mentioned it in previous studies. He struck the rock instead of speaking to it. He did not hallow God in the eyes of Israel. Verse 23. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. I pray let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan those pleasant mountains in Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, Enough of that. Speak no more of me to this speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift your eyes toward the west, the north, south, and east, and behold, behold it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you'll see. Sometimes, as we look at lessons for us, sometimes, sometimes no means no. Sometimes the answer is no. You see it all through Scripture. And it is no surprise that Moses goes to the Lord and says, Please let me go in. I have been with these people. I am... At this time, he's 120 years old, I believe, yes, because he's 40 years old when he leaves Egypt. He's 80 years old when he comes back, and then you have the 40 years in the wilderness. He's 120 years old. Please let me go in and see the promised land. I've been with these people for 40 years. But the answer was no. And he had not hallowed God in the eyes of Israel. Paul, in the thorn in the flesh, I pleaded three times. And that thorn in the flesh remained. That messenger of Satan remained. The Lord let this cup pass from me three times. The answer was no. The answer, the answer was no one a sense of the cup would not pass from him. Now why is that? Why does the Lord do that? Why did the Lord do that with Moses? Why did the Lord do that with Jesus? Why did the, the Lord do that with Paul. Sometimes it's for our own good. Paul, the thorn in the flesh, he learned that in weakness there is strength. Perhaps even Jesus, he learned obedience even to the point of death. Here with Moses, you got to learn to hallow God in the eyes of Israel. You got to do what the Lord tells you to do. So sometimes it's for our good. Sometimes it's for other people's good, though. Why did, why, in the case of let this cup pass for me, why did Jesus still have to go to the cross? For others' good, certainly. And with Moses, if the Lord would have given, if, if the Lord would have said, okay, you can go on into the promised land. Well, why would you not allow everybody else to go into the promised land? Surely they pleaded too. See, in, in what we start seeing is the justice of God. And I think ultimately, when we 
consider the passage. Moses, please let me go into the promised land. And the Lord says, go up to Pisgah and look. And he does. And what, what Moses did, and, and I think certainly Moses did this, as all, I believe Hebrews talks about, all those who claim to be pilgrims and strangers, looking for a city without foundations. They were looking forward to heaven. And that area to the west of the Jordan River was not the ultimate reward. Yes, it was the promised land, but it wasn't the ultimate promised land. And so even though Moses was not allowed to cross the Jordan, Moses is one of those few people who I think we very much can say was saved. Moses shows up, of course, at the account of the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses also shows up, the body of Moses shows up in Jude. Uh, Michael the archangel contending with the devil about the body of Moses. But it's not the ultimate reward here, this physical land to the west of the Jordan. And so that's what we have to remember. When we go to the Lord, and we may have certain desires, and we may want certain things to not be a part of our lives, and sometimes the answer is just no. And that's okay. Because those things are not the ultimate reward. Those things are temporary. Some temporary ailment. Some temporary situation. Some temporary thorn in the flesh that we have to bear. And sometimes the answer is no, you just got to bear it. And that's okay. Because those things are not the ultimate reward. And the ultimate reward is yes. And that's what we have to remember. Moses, and let's go back to our passage. And let's close with this thought. The answer, the answer was the answer. Look at what Moses, the next verse, speaks about, the next chapter. Moses says, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I, which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Obey the word of the Lord. Obey what the Lord says to do. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Do what the Lord tells you to do. And I assure you, no one knew that lesson better than Moses. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Hope this study has been helpful for you. Appreciate you. Hope you join us for our next brief look into God's Word.